Juliet Singler. I hope you're having a wonderful time out there. Choir, go ahead and join me up here on stage and we'll get started with Turquoise Rain. short walk from our house, uh, half black down and uh, a little pathway lined on each side like a couple of manzanita bushes. She would always look after me when my mom was busy, which was most of the time. Uh, my dad left when I was two, so my mother had to work two jobs just to put food on the table. She was stressed out all the time, not very pleasant to be around, criticizing me all the time and piling up on the chores. I was only too happy when I was with my grandmother. She used to have a stick of gum for me, a kind word, and magic. She used to have a pure turquoise ring that her grandfather had given her when he was a tribal elder. She said that we spoke to her. Her tribal name was Pa. Uh, then she moved to the city, and then she went by the name of Paula. I always called her Lita. If I would ask her, Lita, have you seen my shoes? And she would say, let's ask the ring. She would bow her head, and then she would point to exactly where my shoes were. And one day when I was at her house, I was drawing and I sighed heavily. She comes to me and asks me, what's wrong, mijo? Well, if I wish I could have some friends to play with. And she said, the magic ring is going to tell, you, tell us where you will find your friends. It was as if there was electricity running through her arm and to the ring. And she took me out of the apartment, into the narrow hallways, down the stairs, into the alley, and then she would say, say, there they are. There was a group of boys playing soccer, and I quickly joined them, and we continued playing for many years after, until many of them just moved away. They became my friends, and my grandmother became my biggest supporter. When I was with her, I felt loved and taken care of. 
But as years went by, I became a structural engineer and worked for the city of Los Angeles, and I was the one who was evaluating which buildings uh, needed to be condemned, and they were no longer in use. One day, I looked at a, ve a very familiar address. I went to that place, and sure enough, that was the old building where my grandmother used to live when I was a child. I quickly went up to the second floor, and I went to her apartment. Tacked up against the graffiti, there were some drawings that I had made for her, and on the floor there was this whistle that I carved out out of some branches of manzanilla trees that were near her house. I quickly imagined myself playing those tunes that my grandmother had taught me when I was a child. I became a little bit too overconfident because I was dreaming and remembering all this. I tried to pick up the whistle, and as I stepped on some floorboards, the floor gave in. I quickly fell down to the first floor with a large beam pinning me to the ground. No cell phones back then. My regular partner was not with me. I was totally alone, and I was in excruciating pain. I don't know how much time passed by, I lost consciousness. I only remember waking up in the hospital, and the nurses told me that the police brought me in. A little while after, a police officer came in, and he asked me, how was I doing? I said, I'm fine. And he said that this, he was in his, you know, in his car, and all of a sudden, this woman comes in in a very agitated state, and she was alarmed, and she says that she demanded that she go and help her grandson, who was hurt. And she climbed in the car, and she told them exactly where to go. She stayed in the car, and the police officer went and looked for me. He found me right away. He looked at me because my face was pale. And I said, that can't be. My grandmother died 15 years ago. He shook his head and said, well, ah, well, I don't know about that. But he handed me a little bag. And he said, I don't think that was your grandmother because she would look too young. As I opened the packet, this, the little bag, there was. Her turquoise ring. Sometimes you're given something special and we don't know what we've got. We think those things are valuable and yet they're really not but the treasures that remind us of the ones we truly love those are gifts we're given from above Way up high. 
hot turquoise ring her grandfather had given her with love. These are gifts I'm given from above. I hope you have someone who gives you time. Time to be yourself. Time to really try. Time to just discover who you are without much husband gave me this turquoise ring. It was on Valentine's weekend after we'd been hiking in Joshua Tree. We weren't married yet, but we were very much in love. There were no wildflowers blooming at that time, but the manzanita had their little pink blossoms coming on, and they smelled so sweet, like honey. After we'd finished hiking around Barker Dam, David pulled out a couple of sandwiches and a bottle of wine from his pack, and we sat on the rocks near the dam and just took it all in. The beauty of that clear desert day, the clear water of the reservoir, the sweet smell of bees buzzing in the manzanita bushes, our love for each other. David reached into a pocket of the pack and pulled out a little box and he said, here, this is for you. I opened it and there was this beautiful turquoise ring in it. He said, my grandmother gave me this ring. She was very special to me. She told me it was magic. I don't know if she was just messing with me or what but I've always felt that it protected me. I want you to have it now, so you can remember every day how much I love you. And then he asked me to marry him. Well, we married later that year, and a couple of months after, he had to go up north for a conference. And about three days into his trip, I lost the ring. I was mortified. I had never taken it off. And now I couldn't even imagine where it could be. And he was due back that night. I tried to retrace my steps and even got our little dog Barker. <laughs> yes, we named the dog Barker after the dam. To help dig in the garden to see if we could find it there. <gasps> Nothing. I called my sister to come over and help me search. We spent the entire afternoon cleaning and turning the house inside out. Around 3 p.m., I went to the kitchen to make us some tea. I had just set the pot to boil, when all of a sudden, my sister calls to me from the front yard. Nina, you've got to see this. I rushed outside, and she gestured to my little manzanita bush by the fountain. It was swarming with bees just the one bush, and there was a fragrance so sweet and so strong. But just then, I heard a pop from the kitchen, and before I even got there, I could see the smoke billowing out the door. We ran to a neighbor's and called the fire department, and by the time they got the blaze put out, the cabinets and the countertops were all scorched. They told me it was likely faulty wiring that caused the electric teapot to short. Or may maybe I forgot to put water in it. <laughs> A power surge at the outlet made the glass pot so hot 
that it exploded, sending shards all over the kitchen. And sparks from the outlet set the paper towels on fire. <sighs> After all the firemen left, my sister and I sat in the front yard and began looking up the number to the insurance company. But the bees were still buzzing in the manzanita bush. And even though smoke hung in the air, we could smell their sweet work. My sister noticed my little Barker digging under the bush. Hey, Barker, you'd best stay away from those bees, she said. But he just kept digging and whimpering. Finally, I gave up trying to reach anyone at the insurance company. Press one for billing. If you have questions about your policy, press two. If you'd like to make a claim, hang up and dial. Uh, I'd had enough, and I yelled at my noisy dog. Come away from there, Barker. You're making yourself crazy, and you're going to get stung. <coughs> but just then, I glimpsed that turquoise ring right where he'd been digging. I went over, picked it up carefully, and held it out for my sister to see. Look, Anna! Look what he found! No, she said. It was then that I knew the ring was doing its job. If my sister hadn't called to me from the front yard to see the bush, I would have been caught in the explosion and fire. The ring had protected me. Later that evening, I went to pick my husband up from the airport. I had been unable to reach him as he was traveling, so he didn't know about the fire. As he climbed in the car, I said, Welcome home, David. I missed you. And instead of asking him about his trip, I babbled. I almost died today, and now we need a new kitchen. But you know that magic ring you gave me? It really works. I'll explain everything on the way home.
<clears throat> I got this turquoise ring in remembrance of my mother. You see, my mother passed away and she gave me this ring. This ring, she told me, had magic power, but she never told me how to use the ring or what the powers it had. To me, the ring was an heirloom passed down from generation to generation on my father's side. To me, it was just a beautiful, comfortable, sentimental ring. I loved it. I could wear it. And it reminded me that it was special and I was special. I looked up turquoise once online and it said it was wisdom, tranquility, hope, good fortune, and protection. Many years ago, I went to Yosemite Park with my family and when visitors visit Yosemite Park, they're required to watch a video about how to stay safe in the park around bears. You see, bears have really, really good noses. You can't even wear smelly lotions or the bears will break into your car to get to the lotion to investigate that smell. They even have special trash cans at Yosemite Park, which prevent the bears from breaking in, but they try anyway. So you become very wary about bears in the park while you're enjoying the beautiful, fantastic scenery of the park. It's my favorite place on earth to go. And I couldn't wait to return to Yosemite Park and with my children. We were camping at Manzanita Park campgrounds and I was hurriedly making messy peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for our hike. I had chosen the easy hike as my children were still very young and the name of that hike was Bridal Veil Falls. My children at the time were only nine and two. 10 and 11. <laughs> and so we were excited to go on this camping trip. And so as we were rounding the leafy trail of the park, we came upon these really cute little bear club cubs. And we stopped to spy them, but we remembered from that video, that if you see bear cubs, you know mama bear is near. And sure enough, we heard a rustling in the brush and out comes mama bear and she's got another cub in tow. I told the children to stand behind me. I shooed them behind me and I said, stand still, be quiet. And Mama Bear comes out on that trail, and she's looking at us, even as we're backing away. I say, stay still, don't sudden moves. Mama Bear looks at me, but I avert my eyes, because I don't want her to think I am challenging her. But I can see out of the corner of my eye that she is big, she is enormous, and she is closer than I ever want her to be to us. I've got to protect these kids. So I kind of square off and I think to myself, this is mother to mother. Between the two of us, I know that she is probably gonna get the best of us, but I need her to know that I'm gonna protect my kids just like she's gonna protect her cubs. So she walks around and all of a sudden she starts to shift her body and she starts sniffing. <laughs> she sniffs the air and I think, what is she sniffing? And then I remember peanut butter, the sandwiches. And I think, okay, I'm going to take this pack off and I'm going to lay it on the trail and offer it to, to save us. And as I do so, I lower my hand down and I notice there is peanut butter all over the turquoise ring. Oh no, Mother Bear looks at that turquoise ring and she snails. She knows, she knows there's peanut butter on that ring. So then I just reluctantly take off the ring and lower it down onto the pack and I step back. 
Mama Bear comes up to the ring. She sniffs it again. She pops it in her mouth. And then she grabs the pack and she goes running down the trail. Little tail, fuzzy, all the way back. And we're watching her standing still. And I say to the kids, okay, I think the coast is clear. Let's go, run, hurry, hurry. And as we run down the trail, we run all the way back down and we find dad and he's there and we're laughing and we're rehashing the story about how we had this encounter with a bear and how we're saved. But how I lost the turquoise ring. And I say to my husband, I am so sorry I lost that turquoise ring. But mama was right. The ring did have magic. It saved us from mama bear. And I hope she had a good snack. sharing lunch with mama and her clan next time i'll make more peanut butter since she's such a fan i'm really glad she took my ring instead of my whole hand just another picnic in the woods I'm just so glad my mother froze and did not pee on me. Just another picnic in the woods. Bear tracks 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 in the woods. Better make a sandwich for the bear and make it good. Cause mama bear don't want you in her I'm kind of glad I stayed at camp with her. I got the. I'm sometimes something, 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 something about a bear. country for about 150 years. Just after the golden rush, my great-great-grandpa, he set his eye on cattle ranching and providing supplies to local miners. We lease our meadow from the government that we drive our cattle to every spring to graze. During the drive, we go through a densely wooded area that slows us down, but most of the older cows know their way, and the trails are mostly worn. One spring, as I was helping with the drive, 
I noticed, I noticed something colorful along the side of the trail, and I jumped off my horse to see what it was. Something blue, and it seemed to be stuck in a pile of, well, for you polite and genteel folk, we'll just call it a pile of dung. And it looked like it came from a bear, and a pretty big bear at that. Now, sure as heck, I'm not going to go pulling anything out of that mess unless I know for sure it was something really worth I should, you know, really worth it. Well, it was the prettiest turquoise ring that I had ever seen, intricately carved with stones that really looked valuable. Now, re really valuable. And I looked at it closely and I figured, well, this might be worth something. <coughs> so I stuffed it into my pocket. I washed it off in a stream and I stuffed it into a pocket of my saddlebag and left it there for a friend to take a look at. Now we weren't, knew we weren't going to get much sleep that night before the morning's drive. So we left the horses' saddles on. Now that night, as we were sleeping, some yahoo to the north of us decided to set off fireworks. Uh -oh. And in the middle of the fire season, that's not a real good idea, and started a rapidly moving wildfire. We woke to the smell of smoke and the winging of our horses. Most of the cattle had already settled down into a meadow, but when that smoke started bearing down on them, they scattered looking for places to hide. We came out of our tents on high alert. Now, there's no reception up there, so there's no way to call for help. We just had to gauge the speed of that fire and figure out what to do on the fly. We decided our best bet was to ride on out of there hope that the rest of the herd would follow. There was simply no time for a roundup. Now, as I went to get my own horse, Sheila, she bucked and got loose from me and ran down into that meadow, frightened. I had no choice but to ride on out of there with my brother on his horse. We had to leave Sheila and the whole hundred head of cattle in that meadow, not knowing what was to become of them. So many lost, so many lonely, my heart sinks to think that I'm the only solitary living thing around. Smoldering embers crackle on the ground. Once the West was one, but now it's lost. Once the West was one, but now it's lost. Too many dug for gold at too much cost. Gold fever heated up them golden hills. Gold fever heated up them golden hills. Now California. Burning like an oil Is 
there any way to break the chain? Is there any way to break the chain? Who can turn this fire into rain? But now it's lost Once the West was won But now it's lost Too many dug for gold That too much cost sheltered down for a couple of days in an old barn at a pretty safe distance from that blaze as firefighters from all over the state battled that fire. In the old days, the local tribes had taught us to manage the trails to keep that brush under control. But these days, what with the heat and the population density and the government regulations, well, it was almost impossible to keep that brush under control. I shuddered to think what might have become of our herd and all the wildlife in that area. Once we got the go-ahead, we gathered up some friends and rode on in to see what was left of our herd. My heart was breaking as we passed the forms of burned deer and their fawns huddled together. Still, there was no sign of our herd. As we rolled up onto a mesa, we spotted a grove of raspberry bushes and manzanita growing up along a valley that didn't seem to be affected much by that blaze. And then, the winning of my horse, Sheila, pierced the air. She had spotted us up on that ridge and was calling out to us. Well, we rode carefully down into that valley and unbelievably found her there with the entire herd. The manzanita had grown up along a series of springs in that valley. And though most of its leaves had been burned away, its tough red bark had acted as a natural barrier to that blaze. As soon as I got a hold of my horse, she helped drive a cattle down into a meadow that had not been burned. A lot of our cattle had been injured, but mercifully, none of them had to be put down. We spent the better part of the night doctoring their wounds until we finally settled down to camp. As I lifted the saddlebag off of Sheila's back, that turquoise ring rolled out. And I was reminded of something my old auntie once said, and that was that turquoise was for protection. Well, I never did get around to finding out the cash value of that ring, because on that day I knew it was priceless. And though I, I cried myself to sleep over all the life that had been lost in that fire, I was so abundantly grateful that our herd and my horse were spared. That fire was like a plague, spreading all over the highlands, killing mercilessly everything in its path. Only those that were protected survived. The bushes and that manzanita had protected our herd and my horse. And you know, that turquoise rain didn't hurt neither. No, I, I never did get around to finding out what that ring was worth because I made up my mind I would never let it go. I had it made into a 
little bolo tie, and I wear it around my neck, near my heart, most every day.
when the land was scorched and dry, when coyote pierced his tongue on the prickly pear, when wolf burrowed deep into the sand, that is when we sang our songs and asked for rain. And when it came, our joyful tears mixed with the rain and became turquoise. And as the turquoise covered the earth, we took to our rafts and rescued coyote and wolf and all the other animals. When we could row no further, coyote turned himself into a water spider and gathered all of us into a basket. He walked on water until he found land. When he opened a basket, we climbed out and started again. We gathered the turquoise and drank it. We ground the turquoise and ate it. We threw the turquoise into the heavens to keep the sky blue. One great nugget of turquoise became this ring, which was passed from one generation to the next to remind us of our happiness and our tears, to guide us, to give us hope, and to protect us. I at first held my little granddaughter, Pa, when I was already 10, thousand years old. I had come from the old world and into the new, and I had seen the destruction of our culture. The singers and dancers who could bring creation back together again were few and far between. But by age 10, my little granddaughter had been shown our songs and the ways to talk to Mother Earth. She was the last of our line, and I had seen her future in my vision quest. She would leave our people and create her own new story, but she needed my medicine, my power, and my love. But I could not journey with her. I had made a cider out of manzanita berries and put all of my medicine in it. When we ate that evening, I dipped the ring in the cider. The cider had all the memories of our people in it, all the laughter and all the tears. I put the ring on her finger and I said, granddaughter, your journey will begin soon, and mine will end. You are called Pa, water, part of the turquoise rain that connected the old world with the new. The old world was scorched, but you will never thirst. You are Pa, water, my laughter and my tears will remain with you and protect you always. I give you this ring, made from the old world, to take with you to your new world. Whenever you wear this ring, you will find your strength. Whenever you wear it, the spirits of your ancestors will lift you up. Whenever you wear it, I will be with you, and my medicine will protect you. Like water, you will find your path. We sipped our ciders as we watched the flames of the fire die. And then we slept peacefully 
under the stars. Night has come and when we wake the dawn will lead you on Off to new adventures far away Rest your head upon my knee and I will sing a song To help you greet the dawning of the day Join me on a turn Turquoise vision quest, turquoise skies whose weeping turns to rain, a turquoise river leading to the ocean, an ocean that will bring you home again. You will hold the laughter and the sorrows of your people, centuries of happiness and pain You will find the drop of joy that makes the tears so full Though things will never ever be the same Join us on a turquoise vision quest Turquoise skies whose weeping turns to rain a turquoise river leading to the ocean, an ocean that will bring you home again. You will find your mission and your life will be much sweeter. Your spirit guides will help you on your quest. You will be as flexible as strong as Mazanita, like eagle, you will build a sturdy nest. Join us on a turquoise vision quest. Join us on a turquoise vision quest. of your family tree your wrath will guide you safely through the turquoise sea and when at last you find where you're supposed to be your wrath will guide you safely back to me